Blessings, welcome forward to Reasonings right at the Tree of Life. We are in Mile Gully at our most ancestral and ancient of churches, yeah? And it's around the corner from the home of Brother Raman Singh. And you know, we, we were always passing this place and Brother Raman always said, you know, there's something about this church and the first time we passed it. And in history, you know, they, have, they gave it a name, they call it Duppy Church. And you know, in Jamaica, that means a church where they say spiritual activity is high. But this church wasn't about any negative activity. It was said that in the late hours of the night, people would hear services being conducted here. So we, we got um, nothing to go something or any of that, so we'll just dispel that. We decided by the spirit that, you know, we'd take some um, shots here, do a video here, because um, the dead in Christ shall rise first, right? And as such, and that came into my spirit when I, when I sat here, by the way. So it wasn't a thought I had prayed before. Dead in Christ shall rise first. And I know people are going to say, what did Jerome say that? There's a service going on. Well, you heard me, right? So you, you, you can play metaphysical mind genius or spook whatever it's not what we're talking about so this is a part of our heritage and we are we have no record whether or not um, church is conducted here in the spirit realms we said it's a part of the heritage and the culture of the people that people say that in the hours of the night brother roman isn't that what they say yeah, right. that they hear um services going on and as such we thought whoa it's a reverent place that the spirits could still be doing service in the honor of yeshua mashiach why not come and capture a few scenes here and so mm -hmm. that's why we're here well, you know, it's so very interesting, you know, that we're here in this wonderful church and, you know, we were talking about the quality of the architecture and one of the things I wanted to show Brother Raman was that, well, I guess by extension, show you the quality of the cut stone work. Now, you can realize that the, that facade in the front is probably added maybe uh, a few years after, right, for some kind of uh, aesthetical effect, but we can look at the actual stone work, right? And, um, you know, sometimes they say don't show many things at once, but I would like you to pan a little bit to the right before we even do that. Do you notice those 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 um, uh, um, headstones? You can tell by the weathering how old those headstones are. And those, you know, are ancient because the circular, those things are not signs of how you demarcate graves in today's age. So that's one. You got a, you got a few vaults over there made from cut stones. We're going to look at that. And, Brother Roman, if, if, you, if you pan back to the left down there, you can see. Right, because we're talking about the stone work and we're going to come back to the church. I, I'm a man led by the spirit because authentication is a, is a very strong thing again. Alright, so I know a little bit about ancestry, right? So I know, say, these are kids' vaults, right? But I want you to look at the fact that they are made from the same stone that the church is made from, right? That is what I'm trying to define. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this is the ancient, this is, these are the oldest graves, right? And these substantiate the fact that this graveyard has been here for hundreds of years, right? If you know anything about anthropology and how it is that a vault or a grave is made in those times, right? You can see the plate here, right? You can see. You can see modern editions, but this one I want to show you up here, right? Right? So because I said authentication, let's, let's go to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so some you can still see. The spirits that use this one here. No disrespect, brother. <laughs> it says, Thomas Powell, who departed the life on the 5th of January 1839. So these things I want to talk about for authentication to show people that we're not spooks and we're not talking about this thing. Look at this black stone here. Man. Oh yeah, this one too. I didn't even notice this, right? Sa I mean, I noticed it, but I thought, well, sacred memory of John Clark of Kendall in this parish who departed 1858. Yeah? I might have thought this, this, this I think this is an addition that they probably put this on at some other point. That's why. But it's a, it's a good one. But this is the one I wanted to show you. There's a reason why. I know, I know people understand will understand. This one is very unique. And those are perimeter walls that existed from that time. Here we go. This is what I want to talk about. These. These. That kind of stonework, right? And look at the stone. I know something about indigenous people, how they did things. You see this? This was cut and fashioned to be like this. This block was cut and fashioned like that, chipped away. And so this headstone True. is hundreds of years old. You understand? And these things are very important. So let us know, having given you a look around, um, look at the, the stone work of the church. Because it's excellent. It's just excellent, right? It's just amazing. So here we go. Look, look, at, look at this corner block here. I wanted to share the cuter side, but this side is not a clean, so look at that. I'll touch it. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Look at that. These are hundreds of yellow lines. Look at how straight they are. 
Look, I mean, I mean, I mean seriously, people, look at it. I'm not playing around a game. Look at this. Look at this. This was made 20 years ago. This was made 30 years ago. This was made 40 years ago. This was made 50 years ago. This was made 100 years ago. That is what I'm talking about, right? So I talked about earlier the facade right here, as you can see, was obviously added after. But look at the quality of the stonework, right? This place is epic. This place is not just epic, but it goes to show you, right? And we're gonna go around and show you some other spots as well, too, right? The, the nature, right, of such architecture, the pride we took. This is the spot that I fell in love with, so I guess we get to show you, right? Look at that. Look at that. No, I know people say, Jerome, you, you're so dramatic. Oh, I'm an actor too, right? So, so please, pardon me. So, look at that. That's a chisel marks, right? You see that? That's a chisel marks. So, why am I saying this? This one put in a machine and go... No, this was cut by hands. This has to do with the skill, craftsmanship, the wisdom of applications. Right? And how this is done. And by the way, this is the first video we're really shooting on my GoPro, so you know, blessings for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> and um we already caught some scenes of this, but we have some stuff we gotta show you because we don't wanna come here and we definitely don't wanna make it be because the face is the reason why we came here. And now we're gonna capture some of those things that I want to show you because we really do want somebody to come and recognize that we're not joking when we say these places need to be restored. Check out these, these, these beams. And you, you made it clear to me that probably someone is trying to take them out of the place. Come all the way up on here, look at that. Look at the design work on those beams. Look at that. Got a cross right here, see? Nice cross there. No doubt carved in by the, by, 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 by the carpenter did this. You know? Look at that. Look at that. You see stuff like this? You think, you think this is 3D printed? Look at that. You know, that's 3D printed? <laughs> I'm not mocking anybody, I'm just saying. Right? From in here, you know, I think we've got the baptismal pool right here in the left. Right? And some more plots. Now, I can see this place of sword. I can see this place of sword. I know my brother here can see this place of sword as well, too. Because I can see. I can see coming in here and see this place of sword. And the only thing I've been saying is we will see this place of sword. I'm not joking. So, this is the one that draws my heart, not because it went the furthest back in time, but because remember we saw a kid's arm um, thing out there. So look at that one. Annie Catherine Kennedy, born in Darlin Tolbert, St. Elizabeth, 3rd January 1846, died at Grove's Place in this parish, 3rd February 1856. A 10 year old child. That's one of those um, um, vaults we saw out there, right? And so. This is to show, right, you know, the kind of energy. Here we've got, let's do two here. We're going to do, in love in memory of a dear husband and father, Stephen H. Dwell. Yeah. I'm a family. Oh, yeah, sir. That's my mother's last name. Oh, yeah, sir, brother. My yeah. family come here, sir. Died 8 December 1964, 8 He giveth his beloved sleep. And then there's one up there in, in, in this small tribute of, erect, of affection is erected by the fond and only sister to the memory of J.S.T. Canville of Greenvale in the parish who departed life in the 14th of April, 1875. Right? Mm -hmm. that, that one is well preserved. I'd love to see that one restored around it. And the, the shameful thing as we're telling you, literally, the shameful thing we're telling you is that it seems, right? All well, these flats are marble, right? And it seems some people who were misguided, who we don't want to be derogatory. Because I can't be quite derogatory. I'm a, I'm a person, I have a strong personality, which people know. And sometimes it shows. I mean, people say, Jerome, come on, it's an old church. Bite me. For that reason, is why we are going through these things. We don't have respect, right? right? And then we talk about we have no heritage, we have no culture, and we do have nothing. Because we want to respect things that is, is given to us as this postmodernist thing, right? When you come and you, you dig these things out because they're marble and you can say, oh, they're valuable, you dishonor the heritage. Look at all those who are dug out. Look at the spots. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, so part of my, my overtures. But I mean, come on, look at the spots. You might somebody dug them out. Maybe I'm carrying a little fire off the ancestor hey. here, but look at it. Somebody dug them out. They, are, they represent the memories of these people. 
their memories. They don't even hear it no more. And somebody dug them out? <laughs> Come on! Grave robbers? Is this a tradition? Church robbers? Sacred robbers? Talisman? Is this what you want? Come on. You know, we got to look at things a little differently. Because we say, you know, we look at the world for everything. But sometimes that decency doesn't start with us, right? And when it don't start with us, it's where things like these happen. Okay, I'm kind of looking at this piece at the back here. Do you think this is like somewhat of an addition? Does it look like it was, I think... What the choir, the all... Yeah, but you what is like, like an addition, yes? You like an addition to the original structure, yeah, you can see that. But the step uh, look yeah, a looks part of it. Yeah, but it looks pretty Look like it, yeah, refurbished. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we you can see this was probably the last great color, and probably it is the last great color that was on the wall, right? And it has preserved the itself till then, yeah? Yeah, and that's, a, that's from, a, um, what did I just say, 1875 as well, too, right? As a store wood, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one comes from kind of base logic. Well, you know, it's a Okay, oh, I couldn't even without telling you that. Look at that. Those windows up on the top there. That circular window. What great architecture that is, man. And, and even the spires, I mean, the, the, the rafters, right? Look at their metallic in nature and the lower portions. Look at that. Look at that design. Right? That's amazing. I mean, you don't see designs like this like nowadays. I mean, the amount of mathematical calculations have to go into that, you know, to put that up. It's not, well, it's not to say the least. Ah, look at this. Look at that. Sorry, I'll feel it. Yeah. You can see in between the, the falling away of the jam. You can see it's original masonry. And this is just the, the, the covering. Probably a white line solution, right? And then you can see an internal masonry, right? That's a bit different from this, right? But it's within the same time as well, too. So you can see that people in generations had tried to really preserve what was there before. And our topic isn't definite, but really it's about a little bit of a mixture of, you know, being faithful to the cause and um, respecting the ancestry. You know, because a lot of times you find that places like these are negated because they have slipped out of the popular, um, you know, mental space of the current sets of administration and the current civilization. In a lot of society, things like these are preserved for antiquity. First thing I looked around and I noticed the, build, the building, right, the shell of it, is pretty well preserved. You know, to the point where this is some ancient cut stone work that isn't um, prevalent in Jamaica today or anywhere in this place today, you know. These are hundreds of years old, so we're looking at it from the ancestral, but also from the archaeological and, and essence that, you know, part of our heritage, if it gets destroyed every single time, and we talk about continuity and why it is we don't feel connected to those who have passed because we see them in a negative light. Again, from anybody who have passed, we forget about them. This is how these churches and the, 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 the graveyard where ancestors lie, surrounding these churches, we become these wastelands. And the moment we enter into this space, we could tell the good vibration. But also we could tell the negative energy too, right? Because you mentioned that. The rain tried to deter us. Just for a moment, it was dry and as we came trying to clean, it started to run us and the Spirit said to us, no man, it shows a blessing and we persisted and here we are. Blessings, Brother Rama. Perfect love. Perfect love, brother. True. So what was your motivation? <laughs> I mean, I said mine, but why did you feel that we, we could come and shoot some scenes here and find necessary? Normally on the videos, I'm not smoking, but you know, in the context of this one, the energy is just such, you know? Because of oh, the vibration. Hallelujah. I always pass it on and say, what an interesting place. And when we hear the story from the brother yesterday, you know. Oh, different country to, to some of the, the popular one, oh yeah. yeah. I told you the traditional angle. Well, yeah, tell them the angle, yeah. what we found out yesterday from someone who lives around here and operate right outside. Yeah, because he work here every day. Him there till night. Yes. So him know what go on. Yeah, he has a little stall on the outside of, of the, the complex. Yeah. So we asked him yesterday if he ever hear no dopey thing or nothing no go on over here. And he laughed and said, No. You know? Uh -huh. So we realized, Oh, it's just a story what people tell, you know? Uh -huh. Make people get afraid of the place and even afraid for even look over here. Uh -huh. you know? See but me always see, now me even see it as a more beautiful place now. Yes. And I said, Whoa, What a piece of history. Yes. You know? So I'm glad we're there now, man. 
And the other thing we found out was that our friends suggested that we can see evidence of it. That people have been taking the stuff, taking down the beams and taking six things to put on their structures. We can't suggest any houses because it might not be the house, it might be to build a fall coop or something. But the fact that you're taking away sacred relics and making them a part of something else that is, you know, personal while while it was here it served the community. So imagine if we saw some beams lying there. Imagine if we came and restored those beams. Imagine if we restored the church. Imagine I mean, you know, I love to hear sometimes some people speak in such a manner that sometimes I'm just laughing. Because you know why I'm laughing? Because I can hear them clearly appreciate the anthropology from other societies, right? And talk about how good it is that they feel that these people can define their history and identify things about it. And yet still so you're in your own nation state, right? Irregardless of whatever our political structure is. And you as a government, as administrations, as civic organizations, cannot find it in your what do you call it? Your latitude, <laughs> your your aptitude to consider restoring old churches, old town halls, and ancient architecture across Jamaica. And there are lots of heritage-based bodies in, in this United Nations Organization for Cultural Heritage, Indigenous Heritage. Yeah? Why isn't these things considered? Oh, because it's mild gully and maybe it's not voting central of a party constituency design system here, right? Maybe it's not enough votes. Or maybe the people who are considered espousing historical anthropo anthropological information and knowledge think this part of um, Jamaica has no relevant history. And as such, you know they go and they think, oh, it's a swivel nuevo and blah, 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 and Spanish town and more town. <laughs> you know, so they forget about places like this. But, I mean, the Spirit is saying to me, people like this love to hear about authentic authentication. Right? It's a word. Don't try to baffle me. They, they care about authenticity and authentication. We were here, we are here, sorry, and we observed while we looked inside that there are plaques here from the 1800s, right? So that's one of the first cases of authentication that we can say to prove that this place, I mean, if you see something on the wall that says 1800 and something, right? And you can test the stone and the quality to know what was it, the, the way in which they did plaques in the 1800s, right? Well, by the grace of God, they're not all dug out of the church wall, because it's true, they're marble, and we see that they've dug some, some out, so there must be some marble, actual marble, where some are being dug out, but for the authentication, for the authenticity of this place, there are plaques from the 1800s. We show you at least it's 200 years old, at least, right? We don't have, we didn't see a plaque of erection. I'm sure it's probably around here somewhere that might actually tell you how long it is, and probably even before that. In the previous, in our, in, in our original nation state, it probably was a sacred place that we held as a part of our ancestral rights too, right? Because we had a developed society, right? Did you know that the societies of the West were, were under a lot of what we call international Muslim law? Okay, that's another day for another story. But anyway, we had religious um, institutions and even the Caribbean, even in our Jamaica, in Goat Island and other places, we have monuments that testify to our heritage as Tainos before the European empires, you know? Signs from the Lokono, Hakreni. Sarunichi. So it's essential that some of these sites be looked upon, and I'm, I'm spiritual to say it, not purely as a religious relic, but as something of the cultural, hallelujah, heritage. And for people, these stoneworks, not every day. You know, and as we think about how we think about moving forward in our society, and we always want to go to these so called modern stuff, it's like moving from stuff that were made from glass and stoneware into plastic and these disposable things that are so toxic to the environment. It's the same thing we're doing in these postmodern design or these modern design systems where the, the material is so bloody toxic, sorry my French, that it's unbelievably unhealthy. And places like this we can come here after probably this probably been abandoned and not been used for probably 30, 40, 50, maybe more years, right? Mm -hmm. And for this amount of time the walls are so well preserved, left to the elements, so you know and the aura is good. That is how we know because we're not just fickle people. Saru. It's the aura we love, you know. It's a good aura over here, you know. And um, clean your graveyards. Your ancestors lie there. You know, there's something about the dignity of human souls that when your body lays somewhere, you might say, well, it's a body. Well, let me tell you something. You ever notice why in some places they say they're blessings and some places they're not blessings? Some places there's a flood and an inundation and the only place that's left clean is like a church or an ancestral spot. Sacred is sacred, you know. It's not others from the outside that define sacred for you. It's you, it's us, it's we. We, deci we decide, we define sacred. So if you maintain the ancestral spots, the spirit of those who have been 
we stay harmonious with you and it's not about spirit worship because if we're talking about spirit worship we go and say spirit worship and those of you who think that you're so smart that we're thinking that we're playing smart psychologically you call upon your grandmother and your grandfather not as a talisman of, of power as a remembrance of what times they were that you shared with them right the things of good memories discipline morality ethics the way in which she showed you love your grandfather taught you the discipline to be a man to be a father to be a true son to be a patriot you know to be a true matriarch your grandmother showed you how to be a true mother of not just your kids but the community the nation so as we think about our grandparents and recognizing that the ancestral lands and lifestyles is not about a philosophical or spiritual if you have no respect for your parents and those who came before you, the Bible said, don't move the ancient guideposts, right? Because these traditional um, experiences, yes, Father, are essential. Hallelujah. They're foundation stones. If you move them, where do you stand? Where do any subsequent generations stand? Can we, sir, can we stand on the, the fault lines of the Plasticine era? <laughs> I mean, for real, can we really stand upon the plastic orifice of today's modern society when we see that the stonework and the kind of architectural design back then was more harmonious with nature? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And respected the environment that 300, 400, 500 years, and in some cases thousands of years later, we can behold it. Yeah? Even with nature growing up around it. You can see what it is. I don't take much imagination. You can feel it. Hallelujah. Blessings, brother. Yeah, man. It's a piece of architectural work, man, and design that even Mother Day House now have nothing close to this. Look how the foundation strong. You know, at <laughs> the house there, they are cracking at two and them thing, you know. <laughs> after, after a few earthquakes or a few rainstorms. True. And you have a place like this that is, is, as they say, left to the elements. But it's doing good just like the elements. Mm -hmm. It suggests to me that something of someone and the people designed this understood. You were trying to build buildings to disrespect nature. You were trying to build buildings to be a respect to nature. As an example to show here, we are the humans who have learned to do something that is in alignment, congregant with what nature has been, what nature is, what nature has done. So if you do it good enough, it will last. It meant that something about your understanding has been aligned. And it means that something about our understanding in this now age is out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And it goes also to show the people who keep standards in this age are those who are aware of the, the ancient um, foundations and alignment. No mm -hmm. great architect and great builder of this age can talk about building mastery, of true mastery, unless they had studied the ancient text, the ancient um, blueprints. Mm -hmm. right? Because one of the most fundamental issues we recognize is that you ever notice when there's a certain piece of land, and I've studied this, and they say that you cannot build there? And yet still, it is just a matter of understanding the geological makeup and the seasonal makeup and understanding that there are, there are certain materials that are best served in certain environments that are foreign to some builders because they know that you, you build with this, you build with that. They do not know how environmentally you are supposed to be ascribed to the proper analysis of the, the, the essence of the minerals, the seasons, Right? By noticing the kind of way the wind blows, right? The wind tunnel, liquefaction, stuff like that you have to stick in the land, water logs, certain mm -hmm. like this. And you also have to study the very movement of seasonal energies, right? Where the sun is situated, where you pitch your, your door, you understand me? Where your windows, how do you get um, you know, residual um, solar gain and it depends. These things are actually design mechanisms, you know, mm -hmm. that the ancient man knew without the so-called computerized <laughs> modules. Because we know it's computer models that do that now, right? The Bible says, it's wisdom that builds a house. See it there? That's why we should seek for wisdom. If a man now have wisdom, I know how to build a house. It will crumble upon him, you know? <laughs> See it there? Him now have the wisdom. 
He <laughs> don't know how to build the, the beams and the foundation properly. True. The structure. Yeah, you're right. So how can it be established if you not the law to establish it? Yeah. He must right. go seek a help from an expert builder. Yes. And say, sir, I do this and do this. And he must say, no, you have to do this and do this. Do it over, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes you really have to do it over. So it's wisdom that builds a house. Yes. That's why you seek wisdom. You see me? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I second and champion that. And a video like this relates back to authenticity and the authentic understanding of the elements of nature, understanding your environment and how it is that you apply that knowledge through wisdom in the design. That, yeah, 200 years later, you can still have a place that is reflective, right? of the kind of efforts that was placed in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most like God gifted man with the knowledge to live a comfortable experience, even in the way we come to know how some of the knowledge of man has come. But God has only brought equilibrium. Say, for instance, we got a knowledge that is far out and beyond the, the regular human application and understanding, right? Like the thermal nuclear stuff, right? You know, you have your, your protective suits and such, right? God bring the mitigation in terms of the equilibrium of knowledge, right? So let man understand that. Because of such abstractions, right? There's still laws to be followed. So as not to harm yourself. Mm -hmm. So even when man got knowledge from the fallen, God came and showed man right and appropriate knowledge. So sometimes people say, just because you can, should you? And that is something that man will say that's a moral edict, but it goes further to a, 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 a definite law of being, a law of presence, because a lot of times people force the hand of nature, force the hand of God and cause disaster, because they're built on the meridians, right? They block the flow of the energy of the plains or of the mountains, and sometimes this manifests as destroying the hydrological cycle by building and blocking the waterway, blocking the aquifers are... I would say um, exploiting the aquifers for their personal gains while the community suffers and then it causes eventually some form of internal um, damage, tectonic shifts or even mineral um, depletion, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and soil quality de depletes and then, you know, the people come and, other people come and say, oh, we're going to build here, right, to take advantage of the cheap lands and then instead of regenerating the, 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 the ecology, they further block it by digging into um, the waterways, you know, using toxic chemicals, toxic slurries, toxic mix, and toxic stuff that become a part of these foundations that will poison the water source, you know, make it lead and, and salinate the water source for another 150 years. So what we talk about surface level facades, right, of the modern orifice, right, it is destroying the environment. And true wisdom would have taught us how it is that we should build with nature by observing that which has been before and seeing more than anything else how it has stood the test of time. What would be a greater resume for a technique than that which has stood the test of time? You mean a computer model would do that for us? <laughs> Come on. And it's a good it's a good process to, to say that we externalize and you know, we quantify through these calculations. Wow, it still came from within, but come on. How did these guys, thousands, hundreds of years ago, did this? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, how did they? And I'm sure some builders are going to be telling us, well, Jerome, they did this. I know they did that. I'm just saying the state of consciousness around why they got that thought. Is he saying why that wisdom applied? that they could have actually designed stuff that way. They could have actually done stuff that way. Why was it so? What kind of wisdom that was within their consciousness that preceded the construction, the design of something that would last? Because it's not the act of building we're talking about. What comes before the building? I believe you call it the blueprint. What is the, the emotional, mental and spiritual blueprint? Hallelujah! They had. That's what brother Brahman is alluding to that wisdom. So as we continue to examine places in our folk heritage and culture, places that we have had that exponential experience with, may we continue to preserve for the posterity, you know, and for 
our necessary socialization, you know, and education. Because it's, it's good to build upon what has been it's unburdened. True. Swallows. The man looking at the beautiful swallows, you know, that are circulating around the sun. Just remember to respect the things which came before you. Certain things that maintain something to do with where we are, something that, especially like a sacred house, a church. True word, sorry. I have something fell yet. Um, yeah, true word. Especially something like a, a church, sacred space, you know, a spiritual, a communal space. Because those things have more energy to do with the collective harmony of a community, of a nation. So certain places, certain projects have to be done for the, the greater good. So some of these projects is not being done for a personal good, but sometimes they are private philanthropists and entrepreneurs and people beyond just the, the, the commercial space that see that it's an heritage and a cultural thing. Doing this here is not about um, your own ego. It's actually about the communal space and the respect of such architecture and what such place meant to us and what it should still mean to us, right? Because it shows an, a, a kind of respect for your generations. And it means that if you're respected who have been, then you kind of have a respect for who is and for those who are to come. And you also teach your generations of how to respect those who are, those who have been, and yeah, those who are to come. So morality and the, the, the course and the direction the churches teach, the mosques teach, and the places of the synagogues, right? The sacred space within your communities, whatever they teach, and the essence of how the family is maintained. Because every culture, every, everywhere knows where things go out of sync with what is harmonious. We're not talking about a place where they go to sacrifice people, destroy the lives of people. So a human being can understand what we're talking about. It's not a mind game we're playing. Why do we talk this way? Because we hear you in the spirit, how you react to such things that we say. You understand? Because where you've been taught to look at people who relate to things the way we do, it's almost like sometimes good reasoning, good sense goes out of it. For me, you're Yeshua or Jesus. It's like, <laughs> we are crazy people. And I won't stop saying that because it's like it's the way in which it is. So you got to understand where we're coming from in seeing it in the context that it relates to you. When I was being taught by my teacher, one of the things he showed me how much is the graveyards were unclean and how, how much we have shown scant disregard for our, our, our generation that came before us because we've been taught to see them in a negative light. And yet still, those are the moral and the genetic ground, the standards. So we're not talking philosophical, ooh, here we go with the, 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 the pocus pocus stuff. Actually, genetically, you came from them. They are not figments of our imagination. Hey, they lived. And because they lived, it's the living genes that was in them that they passed on that is now living in us. Now, I, I want you to take a second and grasp that. Just, just take a second. Because we get confused by philosophies. So let me say that again. It is the living genes that was within them that is alive within us today. The moral code, the moral compass, decency, it is genetic. Epigenetics, it is genetic. So you might think, respect of your ancestors, <gasps> just get, get into the wise understanding of why it is that things are the way they are and how we have suffered when we do not respect the ancient guideposts with disrespect places like these and the heritage of the people who sacrificed to make it be a place of worship. Right? Those who donated the lands, those who purchased the lands, those who, who caretaked it for hundreds of years. How many caretakers of this place had? Right? How many sisters and brothers and indeed children have been conceptualized because their parents met here, came here? were delivered from curses of demons and vampires and blood suckers and leeches and low-minded, low mentality and broken spirit and contrite heart. Yeah? I say, right? How many of them were married here? How many of our children? How many prime ministers? How many leaders of opposition? Right? How many leaders of government business? How their genealogies and their bloodlines can be traced back to an auntie, a cousin, an uncle, a great-granduncle, a great-granduncle, a great, a great grandfather who got married here, who went to church here, right? True, true. <laughs> Let us not become shallow. Sometimes I, I do things and people say, oh, you're so talkative. 
Do you know this is how we communicate as human beings? And if this is how we communicate, at certain points in life, that's why we read books, because it's speech, but it connotes and denotes and transports and transmits information, mm -hmm. meanings and values. That's why we do reasonings. All our topics won't be on exactly the biblical orifice and understanding of our Christ-like nature. A lot of it will be life. That's where the presence of God is. See? Mm -hmm. So until next time, you know, we're just reminding you to respect and take care of your sacred places for the communal harmony and good of your culture, your society, your people, for love to grow within your community and remember what it is like for your parents and grandparents before you so that you can have that, you know, knowing to create and for your children also to have that knowing so they can come and recreate, right? And we keep that unbroken line, hallelujah, of the traditions of the divine way, right? Christ-like way from time immemorial. Any words you want to leave them with, Brother Raman? Until next time. You want someone you ask me about ancestors, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you reply to them, so, like who? Abraham? Mm -hmm. You know, because we don't remember say, the people of the Bible, our ancestors as well. Yes. You know? Yes. So, we just remind them, say, the people of the Bible, mm -hmm. a full blood, same way. Yes. The 20 and 4 elders, sorry. Yeah, so when we are say we're ancestors, if we think of them as well. Yes. You know? Go and on, give brother. thanks for the recent ancestors as well. And the ones to come. Yes. You know? Shea, at some point we are going to be ancestors. And yeah, me and you, imagine when we are ancestors, right? <laughs> if we're not proud of ourselves, now will we be proud then? True. Blessing. Great word, you know. Great word in left way. So remember that the great patriarch and matriarchs of the biblical heritage and history, right? In all our cultures, our ancestors. And this is, you know, what we should consider, you know, we honor and remember what they've taught us. Until next time, the great owl, Jerome Sage Butler, right here, reasonings at the Tree of Life, and Brother Raman Singh. Perfect love. Perfect love, brother. Perfect love. Yes, Perfect love. Perfect love. That we know is usually the people that know what is the valley so Adam Jadid go show the Christ didn't know Yeshua didn't know of whom to trust and of whom to protect who for light and of whom to select back in the day they talk about intellect no they talk about intertech Take it as me tell you it's a war in the soul When you see the angels them come a truth and the pro We never make them get out of control Fighting for the youth them are fighting for them souls We no one death to send them in a creature We no one them mash up and wrap up and fall up in the soul Blessings for the people who live by the law for God gave man his gift of himself, the spirit that dwells amongst us. No matter the cause for the dead in Christ shall arise firm. In that is when we truly know. Our life and what is worth The dead in Christ shall rise first The dead in Christ shall rise first Amongst the brethren First amongst the sisters